is up you guys welcome back to the channel pj and i are going to send it on an offshore mission but that episode will be next week i'm going to go ahead and uh, reminisce about a trip i did the other week we got into a little bit of action a little fishing a little diving we were supposed to send it to the bahamas but the weather was just not having it so stuck to primitive gear in our local waters and it wasn't a total loss i'm pumped i get to bring you guys on this little mission stay tuned and check out this footage something smoked it it's a real screamer. It's probably gonna be a trash fish. Bonita, bonita or a or a barracuda. <laughs> oh, it's a fight too much. The sharks get it. Shit. Smoked it. it. Didn't take long. No. Shit. No, no, it went for another run. <laughs> Oh. All right, don't lose it. Don't mess this up, Jack. Don't pull me now, Steve. Come here. It's on. In my mouth. Oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> I have it on in my finger. Get an AJ. Get an AJ or a permit. You guys want it? You got something right there. That's oh, somebody else fish. got That's another fish. fish. Here, I can. I is it a snapper? No, it's an AJ. You want them? No, 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 gaff. No, gaff. You want to net it? You want them? Yeah, just net it. Walk back, Jack. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. I can't. Put his hand down. There we go. Nice. Good job. Ah! Oh, God. You got another AJ. See, you got an AJ, too. Nice. Got on him. Woo! Only that one. I think I need to switch to a, a little thicker hook. Yeah. Nice little AJ. I think we should put up a good fight. Here we go. Right you? Good one. So we've been trying to make it to the Bahamas the past couple days, but the weather just has not been cooperating. And that's just sometimes how it goes. But we're gonna make the best of the situation. We're sending it off about 15, 20 miles out, something like that. And we're on some rubble, some rock pile offshore. And we're anchored up, we're doing a little bit of fishing. Not a lot of catching, but the whole idea is uh, I think I might throw my dive gear on. We have all primitive gear. Didn't bring the spear guns. We could have, because we are off the Florida coast but we didn't make it to the Bahamas, but either way, primitive is what we've got. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of diving. We're anchored up, the current's ripping. I'm gonna try to see if I can maybe do some passes and drifts. We're gonna figure it out, I'll talk you through it. But I'm gonna be rocking the Hawaiian sling, the homemade one with the reel. And who knows what we're gonna get into. But we're doing a lot of chumming, so we're gonna see what's kinda eating the chum, but not eating our fishing lines. And that's the advantage of being in the water with the fish. I'll see you guys in the water. Welcome back underwater everybody. So you can see from this area, you cannot see bottom. It is only about 25 feet deep. And I'm with just my sister. The area we're at is around kind of a marker buoy. So we know there's some rubble down below because something has to be holding on to the marker buoy. And all this bait that we see in the top of the water is a really good sign. So now I go ahead and make my first drop and I see some structure on the bottom. But as I get closer, I realize they aren't structured, that they're actually giant Goliath grouper. And if you don't know about Goliath grouper, here in Florida, they are protected. Back in the day, there used to be a huge market for them and they yielded so much meat that people would shoot one or two and have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of meat. And you can see how close I get to these things and they're really kind of a dumb clumsy fish but and they're honestly becoming a pest here in florida they're almost on the same level as sharks as in stealing your fish off of your spear for spear fishermen so now i make another drop just hoping that there might be something around the goliaths because they have been known to hold other predator fish around them uh, but if you have to be careful if you're spearing around goliaths because they will take fish off of your spear and you can see me I come up on this one and I line up a shot and I'm just kidding. My spear isn't even attached to my band. I'm actually not even, um, you know, I can't even shoot my spear. I just thought it'd be cool to kind of aim on one of these things. And if I ever did shoot one of these, it would be an insane battle because it's like shooting a, I mean, 100 plus pound fish. And they get 10 times bigger than this. I've seen some monsters out there on the wrecks. So these next clips are the next day I ended up getting out on the jet ski. So I went out one afternoon with my buddy Reese and we decided to hit up some wrecks. 
All right, you guys, we're out here on the spot in the middle of the Atlantic. Fingers crossed. Guys, down below. So now this is a local area, and I, I do have my spear gun. Like I said, this is a next day. So we go offshore just for an hour or two, and I make a drop on a wreck that is in about 100 feet of water. And it was really murky from the surface, but once you drop down about 20 feet, it just opens up and was crystal clear. And uh, one thing I really noticed on this dive was there was so much life. You could just see all the fish in the area. And one thing I noticed were a ton of barracudas. And throughout this dive, this afternoon session, you'll see how many barracuda come within sights. And I saw a permit off in the distance there, but we are a little too close to state waters. It's illegal to shoot them. And I let this one slide primarily because I have to. Otherwise, permit are delicious to eat. But you'll see all those barracudas and... When I'm diving and I see barracuda like that, I always keep an eye out for wahoo because sometimes they like to blend in with the barracudas. I've seen it happen before. And when the water's crystal clear with a lot of bait fish, a lot of life, that means wahoo could be cruising nearby. So I go ahead. That was my first drop on this wreck. I head to the surface and I let Reese know what's up and what I see. Gorgeous. Drop. Now moments later afterwards, uh, we drifted past the wreck, and I knew there was some reef edge and rocky stuff. Reese made a drop and plugged this stud mutton, so we were pretty stoked. So we were losing some sunlight, and I knew we needed to get some fish in the box besides that mutton. So we made one more drift on this wreck. And uh, on this drift, I did see everything that I saw on the first one. I saw the kudas, I saw the permit, and uh, even right there, I saw some giant jack cravals, which is always a good sign. So my idea was I was gonna keep an eye out, look for some yellow jacks, and you see just so many freaking barracudas. It was insane. I've never seen that many barracudas, it's like a wall of them. And they were coming in really high. Usually I don't pay too much attention to barracudas, but these guys were coming in uncomfortably close and just staring at me. And I, I don't know what they were thinking, but it kind of made me a little uneasy. But you see, there's a couple of yellow jacks off in the distance there, there, and those things are freaking delicious. So I had that on my mind. You can hear me grunting, and that usually gets them to come towards you. And I wasn't really pursuing them. I just was floating there, grunting, landed a good shot, and uh, this guy was big, so I needed to put the brakes on him, on him a little bit. And uh, so I didn't let him take a lot of line off the reel. I, I let him take it as he needed it so because I didn't want to – you know, I didn't want him to get wrapped up in the wreck. I didn't want him to get hung up on the bottom or sharks to get after him. So it was nice. Reese came down. I landed a good shot. So I know Reese, he saw me pulling him to the surface. So he went ahead and added some extra juice, pulling him up to the surface. And I cut a couple clips later. He was down there. We kind of, he kind of tired out a little bit. Reese was able to pull him up. I grabbed the jet ski because Reese made a drop and the jet ski started to coast off. And uh, yeah, we pulled the fish up. And as he gets in my hands, you realize how big this fish is. And Reese went ahead and put another shot in just to slow him down a little more. He still had a lot of juice, but we landed him pretty stoked on this fish, enough to, that we needed the fish bag and couldn't fit everything in the cooler. <laughs> All right, sun is setting, and dude, I plugged that stud yellow jack. These things are like butter. Dude, bro. On the jet ski, another successful mission. That was pretty crazy. Um, beautiful on that wreck, and he uh, kind of came into some grunting noises, and uh, I was able to get this shot off. And Reese plugging some stud muttons. That thing was all lit up and it's really cold down there and there's like a thermocline and uh, that fish was just ice cold. It's cold, huh? Oh, yeah. Freezing. Yeah. What happened? What happened on that drop? Went down. He was munching on the chump. Pretty stupid. Gave me broadside. Took a good shot. A little high, but got him in. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was 
I was scared because I thought that shot was gonna come up. Mine, I was doing the same thing with mine. I was trying to stone him. You got the same shot. I know, the exact same shot. I was trying to I was trying to go for the light out. Dude, look at all those flying fish. There's like flying fish that just bolted from here. Yeah, that's nice, right? Um all right, well we got the fish bag, we got some ice, so I'm gonna uh try to get that um try to get all this stuff in the fish bag, ice it down good, and then uh we'll fillet it when we get back to the table. It'll probably be dark by the time we get in. Yeah, for sure. Everybody always always be wondering how we do it on the ski. We're about to find out. Got him? I know, right? It's like a red. It's like crazy red. <laughs> Are you getting scared in the water by yourself? Huh? And, and not be ready for it? You want it? I'll load it for you. Grab your mutton. Damn it. Yeah, that's what you don't do, want to do. We back at the ramp, taking vids, you know how it be. Look at the size of this thing. Stud. That is a stud. That's what we like to call a stud in the business. Got him in the fish bag. Or we got it done today. So it was kind of a last minute deal. Super stoked that we were able to land some good fish right there at the end. And uh, those yellow jacks, oh my god, dude. These big ones are probably one of my favorite eating fish because they're like so buttery. They actually call them butter jacks. So y'all know why all right you guys i hope you enjoyed that it wasn't a ton of stuff but it was a couple of days of diving and fishing spliced together some footage that i could bring to you guys and entertain you if you guys are new to the channel go ahead and like this video subscribe for more content like this i mostly like getting out on the ocean which is what i'm doing today i will see you guys next week for another adventure Later.